Welcome, welcome. Ziggy1x here with another near reincarnation video. And let's begin with part one of three of my limited series, Saving Near Reincarnation. Now, I've gone ahead and made some notes for this so that I could stay on track and keep this as concise and to the point as possible. So if you see me glancing to the side from time to time, that's just me checking in on my notes. So with no further ado, let's begin this with a very similar way to the way I began my last video introducing this series with a little bit of a history lesson. But this isn't going to be my history. This is going to be just general history. So let's firstly talk a little bit about gold because I titled this Precious as Gold and Silver. So how does this apply at the topic at hand? Well, let's find out together. Why is gold precious? What has made gold the gold standard throughout history of all of recorded hu human history and in our digital, even in our digital age? And why does this continue to still be precious? So firstly, gold is known as the most noble of all metals. This means it does not rust, corrode. It is divisible, versatile, both practical and beautiful, as well as scarce. These things account for both its perceived and real value. It was even used as recently as the 1970s as the real money reserve for the US dollar, meaning that every dollar was tied to a reserve of fractional physical gold. This strengthened the dollar in many ways, and it made the fiat currency, also known as our dollar, or paper money, uh, it made it so that it couldn't be overprinted. And what this did as a result is it increased the faith of other countries in the value of the dollar because they knew that because our dollar over here in the US, us Yankees, was tied to a hard metal, it meant that we couldn't overinflate it. And it also meant that there was actually something tangible and substantial backing the dollar. So as a result, other countries throughout the world had faith in buying the US dollar's debt or the US economy's debt based in the dollar. They also had faith in tying the uh, value of their own currency to that of the dollar because it had such a strong backing. Now, let's move ahead a little bit. The US no longer stands on a gold standard, which means that in the past years, we have increasingly printed more fiat or paper money. And as a result of this, inflation has skyrocketed. But as a secondary result of this, the trust of other nations, the trust that they once held in the US dollar, no longer exists to the same degree, which means that they're not as willing to buy up the debt of the United States because it's no longer tied to something tangible, but it's only tied to what was once perceived as a faith in the dollar, the US dollar. So how does this apply to near reincarnation? And uh, how do we take this e economics lesson and tie it into this game? Well, let's talk about this a little bit. Once upon a time, we had units like A2, Celebratory Gale. Then we got Celebratory Demos. And then over time, our roster began to be increasingly flushed out. Now, these units were almost exclusively injected into the game through limited banners. And these limited banners were relatively scarce. We were able to pass on a few, but there were some that were really awesome. Again, A2, Celebratory Gale, Demos, these guys were trendsetters. They really changed the way the game was played and they were impactful. Now, back in the day, we only had to save up our advanced handbooks and we could then use these to slowly over time, and this is the way I did it for many, many moons. Over time, we would increase the power of our characters. We would look forward to that next advanced handbook or those next two advanced handbooks and uh, the event that would give us two more advanced handbooks and slowly we would get all right, I've got 10 advanced handbooks. Now I can go ahead and bump up the level cap of my, of my costume. Awesome. Just a little bit more power, a little bit more power out of those passives and everything else. And it felt great because you were moving forward because you had a clear path forward. So in economic terms, there was a sense of healthy inflation because there was a sense of real value tied to what we were being given 
And then if we really needed to dip into it from time to time, we could dip into the debt of the game. And we could buy a few advanced handbooks from the shop with some other gems. And that felt, that felt fine because that was what we needed to push it over the edge. It was a good investment because it was a sure investment. And occasionally we'd take those gems and gamble them a little bit on the banners. And if we lost, we lost. If we won, we won. And it was just a part of the game. Now, this all changed with the Awakenings, though. And let me tell you how. At this point, we were slowly increasing the amount of, we were being given more advanced handbooks. And so it was becoming increasingly easier to level cap more and more of our costumes, even though none of us were really, or very few of us were at the point where we could do it with all of our costumes. So there was still a level of scarcity in them. But at this point also, the value of the advanced handbooks in the page shop were falling off a little bit because we were starting to be given them in the game. Now, here's what happened next. We had the shop and it hadn't changed. And to this day, actually since Awakenings, the shop really hasn't changed at all. And so the resources we were accumulating through playing the game didn't reflect the Awakenings that we were being given. And now a new level of power was introduced into the game. and. From this power, we saw new abilities and characters being unlocked. We saw new uses of characters being unlocked. And then we started getting more and more and more of these limited characters, which continued adding more potential and more versatility to the game. And so we started feeling a pressure to start chasing these units. But then once we realized we got them, we realized we couldn't get away no longer with just one or two copies of them. If we wanted to fully unlock their potential, we had to get at least six of them because the debris is a part of that potential. And if we wanted to keep our accounts current and competitive in arena and other aspects of the game, we had to pull and we had to dip deeper and deeper into these banners, which means that we had to be more choosy with the way we spent our gems. The problem was is that isn't how we had been trained to really play the game. We had been trained to kind of pull when we wanted to and just enjoy that aspect of it while enjoying that the game was very, that the developers were very good about balancing aspects of the games. For example, the dark memory weapons and uh, other things to where you didn't have to pull on the banners to get the best of one part of the game. And the dark memory weapons still are the best weapons in the game for many, many uses. And so that is that has remained unchanged. But all of these new elements being added to the game did change the overall feel of the game. And so in this past month, we arrive here, past five weeks, and we are now experiencing five back-to-back -back limited banners with a total of new 11, new and very powerful costumes, where once there was a sense of scarcity and value, this has been replaced by oversaturation and a loss of player faith in the development team. This is inflation within Nier, and it's unhealthy inflation because it's rapid inflation. It's inflation that's getting away from us and devaluing everything else we have. And so now it has reached a fever pitch. We're about to experience a new banner this week with three new limited costumes. And so let's take a look at this. <clears throat> much like real world countries have begun pulling away from the US dollar and the US debt, players are starting to detach a little bit from the game. And this is a result of inflation. So now as the title of this video states, let's save near reincarnation first by restoring faith in the main resources of the game, i.e. its characters and costumes. Limited banners have to be rare. This is the first thing, this is important. They have to be rare. If they become commonplace, then they become a nuisance, even more so if they continue to act as the injection of power creep into the game. A way to combat this oversaturation of limited costumes while still having somewhat frequent limited banners uh, that would, you know, we need to limit the banners. We need to limit the costumes on the banner. 
And I would even suggest going as far as limiting the costumes to one per banner. Even if you release multiple characters simultaneously, you have one costume per banner. Because then you could look at the character or the costume that you really want, and you can go specifically after that character. That way you greatly reduce the risk of pulling off banner the costumes you don't want. There's plenty of people out there who've gotten to Awakening 5 with precisely the costume they didn't want and didn't get a single copy of the costume they were chasing. That feels real bad. And that's not the way you want to do this, especially if you're introducing frequent limited characters into the game. But above all else, there must be a drastically dialed down release of new costumes overall. This game thrives on its story and narrative driven aspects. It thrives on us investing in these characters and then releasing multiple copies of them through costumes, each of these costumes doing different things. And so it gives us a chance to really sink our teeth into the characters and appreciate them. And everyone in this community has a character that they've fallen in love with. And those vary for different reasons, but it, we're allowed to have that love for individual characters and for individual stories because we're allowed to let those characters breathe within the game. And this is a story, or this is more precisely, the story team gets it. The story team understands that allowing a story to breathe and allowing it to slowly develop and mature over time and allow you to see aspects of a character you didn't see at first Maybe one of these days I will see a story where I actually start to like Argo, for example. So far, not yet, but maybe I'll see a side of him told from a different view or a different perspective where Argo actually all of a sudden clicks with me because this character has been given room to breathe. The story writers, again, they get it. They understand the economy. They understand that they don't want to oversaturate. They want to let it breathe. They want to let it happen over time so that you can absorb it and so that you can appreciate it. The same thing needs to be happening with the costumes. We need to be allowed to appreciate the costumes that we've been given. And furthermore, there has to be, there absolutely has to be a form of generic awakening stone injected into the game as a farmable resource but also, and I will dive into this in part three of the series, also into the shop to give the shop added value. And furthermore, into the paid banners, I will add. These things will give us a goal and it will re-energize the player base into pulling on limited banners again. Because as I have said, and as I have stated before, I have no intention on pulling on the New Year's banner. I'm skipping it. And I know what's coming in the New Year's banner. And there is one unit in particular, two for me, that are real bangers. And I feel real bad not pulling on them. And here's the thing. If I had a path to success in the game right now, if I had a form of farming generic Awakening Stones, if I was promised Awakening Jones, uh, Stones on a banner, and I was promised them in a shop, I would be pulling on this banner and I would be perfectly content with dipping a few of my own hard-earned bucks into pulling on this banner, this upcoming New Year's banner. But that's the difference. There is no clear path to success. The only path to success that is currently open to us is pulling six copies of each unit that we want. And for most of us, that is impossible. And so this is what we need to do to re-incentivize players, again, like myself, to start pulling on these limited banners again. We need to create a path to success, a path to accomplishing our goal. It could be pieces of generic stones. Um, it could be whole generic stones. On occasion, say when a, uh, say as a celebration, uh, say as a special occasion, because then that makes the player base feel real good about things. But just like we were given advanced handbooks back in the day, and we didn't feel like we had to pull four copies of A2 back in the day because we knew that advanced handbooks were coming uh, at some point, we were given that path to success. We were given that path, even if it was 
a month or so down the road, we knew that we would at some point in the not too distant future be able to maximize the potential of the character we had really fallen in love with. So it basically encouraged us to chase those units. So this is the first part of my video and I'm gonna pull it to an end. And I'm gonna just finally say this here. <clears throat> in summary, if the banners are to be seen as a net good, then there has to be a value in them. Receiving five limited costumes in a row that do nearly, that do it almost for tit for tat the precisely same thing, but are dressed differently is not a way of accomplishing this. Remember there needs to be a perceived value and scarcity to make something precious. After all, if gold grew on trees, we would still use it in our electronics, but we certainly wouldn't make our jewelry out of it or tie our entire monetary system to it. So I'm gonna leave it there. Developers, I hope one of you guys sees this. I hope that the community at large understands where I'm coming from and talking about this as, a, as an economic argument because this is an economy that we're talking about within this game. And I hope that something I said may have been insightful. Maybe even you guys learned a little history lesson. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it here and I will move on to the next video, part two, consistency. And look forward to that video in the not too distant future. And until then, peace out y'all. Have a good night, bye.